Hello and welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're proud to announce Zimcat 01. So I'm going to take you through the new things in Zimcat. There are four of them. So we can go to the site now, press on the cat, and take a look at new in the cats. So we're going to take a look at a generator, but not in this bubbling. Oh, we're going to take a look at connectors but not in this bubbling. We're gonna take a look at a Zim Flipper in this bubbling, woohoo! And over here, Zim Socket and a few other things we're going to look at in another bubbling. So it will be the Flipper. Let's go to the docs right here. And then in the docs, you know that there's an updates link up top here. Woot, up link, or update. <laughs> up link. An update link. And here we have Zimcat01. There's been some changes to the docs. Look at this. Three socket and pizzazz have been added to the bottom. So what I'm going to do in this bubbling is take you through uh, some of the, well, I don't know if you want to call it minor things, but some of the other things. Then we're going to take a look at the generator in another bubbling, because that's a bunch of stuff. We're going to take a look at connectors in another bubbling, because that's a bunch of stuff. Uh, we'll want to check out, too, I think those go with connectors, but some of these things as well we'll go over. And then socket, distill wonder, we can look at that in a, in a different bubbling. Uh, maybe some uh, general updates in this bubbling. Alrighty, so if we go on up, let's uh, just pop on back to the docs and take a peek at that docs update then. Here's the docs, and we'll reduce this down a touch. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the docs. So at the bottom of the docs, we've added our modules that aren't really part of Zim that you have to import, uh, such as the game module. Now, the game module has been there for a while, where we have the documentation on the board, for instance, and, and these other things in the game module. We've just added the three module here, which really only has one three class. But in that three class, there's things to do and set up and examples and parameters and methods, just like before. Uh, all the other uh, documents. And then here's the socket module. We're going to go through sockets again, but the sockets module has been brought into the docs as well. You can see there's a fair number of things in there, even though it's just one socket class. And then we brought in the, uh, the four pizzazzes, although the last one's really just a message. The message says, hey, go Go look somewhere else for uh, how to make paths. Um, so there's not much in there, aside from examples and the, the link to go to and look at. But the, the make shape, we have the various shapes that we can make, how to do them. And here's the make icons, same kind of deal, the various icons we can make and examples of how to do them and the various patterns we can make and examples on how to do them as well. So uh, that's new in the docs. Now, if you are using uh, the three module or the game module, or indeed physics as well, uh, physics, by the way, is integrated right into the documentation because we are doing things with, um, with uh, traditional Zim shapes and so forth uh, with physics. We've, we've got an add physics method and stuff. We, we built all that right into it. So if you take a look at physics, is like that. There's the add physics, which is on a Zim object. So the, all of these, all of these methods right here are on a Zim object, including add physics. If we continue to search, there's a remove physics also on the Zim object. But then there's a physics control right here under the controllers, and that talks about all of the physics module. So physics is built right into the uh, the docs, whereas the game three socket and pizzazz are uh, put down below because they're not quite as integrated there, a little bit more separate. But anyway, you can find the files that th those work with up here. So there's the three JS file, um, socket IO is right there. And then these are the helper modules. There's the physics one, the three, and uh, the pizzazz uh, links as well. Okay, super. So back into updates. That's one thing. The docs have been updated there with those, as, as it says here. And then we talk about the generator, which we'll look at later on. We talk about connectors, which we'll look at later on. And line and colors and series are all, I think, part of those other ones. So uh, coming down here, we've got a loader for text and JSON. 
So the loader loads images or has traditionally load, loaded images is where you click on a button and you get to upload an image or uh, you can actually use, use the loader as well to download images um, or to save images. So that's the loader, but the H is, it's based on the HTML loader. It sort of overlays that and the HTML overlay overlay the HTML uh, uploader uh, loader uh, file class or whatever it is file tag is file parameter on an input tag um, can also load text and JSON files so we've added that right into the documentation and the workings of the zim loader okay so have a look at that that's exciting and thanks Amy for uh, the prompting on that we have a made with zim button so you can do frame dot made with let's increase this a little bit frame dot made with and that will give you a made with zim little icon that uh, as you roll over it you can click on it and it'll go to zim so you can put that uh, dot pose 30 comma 30 comma right comma bottom and it will show up on the bottom of, of your app if you so desire that would be great there's also a make circles, which was a, an older sort of version where we had a bunch of ring colors. We ended up using those circles for broken image icons. But at one point that was a symbol of Zim, the circles, and can still come in handy for making targets and fun things like that. Here's the uh, make icon. So make icon just makes the Zim icon. It doesn't add all the made with stuff and link. And then make cat adds a little picture of a cat that you can do for the, the Zim cat stuff. So those are also available. Here's the flipper. We're going to look at the flipper now. And uh, then this stuff with cores, socket, distill, wonder, and, and those guys we'll look at in another bubbling. Let's just uh, have a look through the general, though. I don't know if it's worth it to, to read through these. Just, just have a quick think. Complete events, we've added an, a 2N parameter to stop animate, and that allows you to stop animate. And the, the first parameter in here would be the ID, any specific IDs you want to stop. The next parameter is a 2N. If you set that to true, uh, anything that you've stopped will jump to the end of the animation. So that's very handy. And thank you, Disco, for the suggestion there that true is very handy. Um, so the end tween had some things uh, adjusted to it, so there's some adjustments there. The layout to the page will now keep the same background or pattern default if you scale the frame. So I think if we scale the frame, then the, the, the background also scales with it on a page. So that's been kind of made automatic. Oh, and we added a bunch of hor uh, horizontally swiping pages uh, for pages. So anytime you added pages, you would have to um, specify that you wanted certain swipes and which pages to swipe to. Well, if you added 10 pages, it's kind of annoying for every page to go in and say, I want this one to swipe to the one on the left, and I want it to swipe to the one on the right, and sort of list all those. Well, what we did is we just made it by default, swipe to the next page, swipe back to the previous page, and not wrap. So if you want anything different, then you can specify the individual swipings, but otherwise it assumes that you want swiping. And, and thanks, Andy, Ernie, for the suggestion there. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a good suggestion as well. <clears throat> Um, we have a motion controller and there's, there was a rotate parameter, but really it was doing the same as the orient parameter is in animate. So we now call the rotate parameter orient. We fix that up a little bit, rotate still around and we threw it into the end of the parameters just for backwards compatibility, but that's on the motion controller. And we also tried our best to keep the start rotation on the motion controller. So if you've already rotated the object and you're wanting it to orient uh, in, the, in a certain direction, then we made uh, sure that it relates to the original, or not the original, but the, like the modified rotation. We're doing it, ro ro we're <laughs> we are orienting relative to, the, uh, to your uh, preferred rotation there. Um, there is some flip issues, so have a read in here as to how to deal with certain flips and orient. It's a little bit different than animating along a path, um, so you'll, you'll want to take a look there. You may have to put your, your object in a container and then orient the container and then the object will flip properly, okay? Because if you, if you have a, a different starting angle on it and you're doing orientation and flipping, then you can't 
always do all of those things at once. So you may have to separate into a container and then the flipping will work properly and the orient will still work properly. So have a read through that. Okay, so I think that's uh, good. Let's go now to the flipper. Uh, there's an example here, or we'll take you to where that example is on the main site here. When you press on cat, you pop on into uh, past the generator, the connectors, and here's the flipper. So here's what a flipper looks like. We've already seen the flipper. It was actually built for an e-learning example, and I'll show you that as well. Um, but what you do is you click and uh, it flips. So it's like a card flipper. There's a few different things you can do. You can flip it vertically if you want. Right now that's considered flipping horizontally. And you can make things interactive or not. I think you can make it just keep on turning rather than sort of go back, go back. You see how it's kind of turning the same way and then back the same way. You can maybe spin around. Uh, there's some some issues as well as you, you see this. This is this is interactive. So if I click on that, and let's reduce that down. If I click on that, it will open up a new uh, new Zim. So you see the the issue is if you make this whole thing interactive, then and this whole thing is interactive, it would take away perhaps the interaction on this. So there's a few settings that relate to whether you want the insides to also be interactive or if you're fine just flipping a card often when you flip a card it doesn't you know you're, there's nothing on the card that's actually interactive all right so we can take a look through that code the other place that we're going to look at is um, back here oops in examples so in examples there's the e-learning quiz and in the e-learning quiz we might hear some sounds. Oh, I don't hear any sounds. Oh, not yet. There's Move the some words sounds. to the matching animal. Uh, Play the sound and press the matching, the matching animal. animals. So these are flippers as well. Oh, try again. Oh, darn it. Oh, try, try again. again. We've seen all, all four different ones there, haven't we? Where was the crap? Oh, try, try again. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! Okay. Um, so, in this one, it's a little bit different in that um, we don't, we want certain things to happen. We, we don't want to be able to click on that and be able to flip it back around the other way. And we might, we want, we want both of those to be active. So what we've done is we've basically disabled the normal flipping on them or the normal interaction. And we put in custom interaction on there. So we can show you how that was done on this flipper. All right, let's go take a look at the code for the, for this flipper. And that's right here, perhaps. Yeah, this is it. So we're in Zim cat zero one right there. We basically make a front. So the front is we're using the, the frame.make icon. We're scaling that up so it's a big Zim card, but you could use whatever you want on there. And the back is going to be a page. It's handy to make it a page if you're going to have interactivity inside it. And I'll tell you why in just, in just a sec. So there's the Zim page. We're using however big we made the front, um, its width and height to make the page, pass in. Uh, a gradient, two gradient colors. One, what does one mean? Hmm, I can't remember. Uh, oh, maybe a border width. Uh, I can't remember what that means. Anyway, we've got a label and it's uh, been added to or centered on the back then. So that's the label on the back. We also set that to a, a no mouse. We have to be a little bit careful. If we leave the label on, the label's got to roll over and highlight and stuff like that. It may actually block a click through to the background of the card. So we're going to have to make it, uh, we have, since we have an, um, an icon on the back too, where is the icon? Frame.make icon. This must be it. Oh, and when we tap it, we go somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Here it is. The part that says frame.make icon. That's where the icon is. So we've got this icon, and when we tap on the icon, we want to go to Zim and open up in a new screen. So we position that at the right bottom of the back and put a tap on it, which calls this function right here. Okay. 
So that's great. We want to tap on that. And uh, when we make the flipper, if we, uh, what does true mean? Interactive. So we've said that we have interactive things on the inside. If we say false, let's try it out. False. And we open in browser. I already have it. I don't know if we've got it open in a browser or not. I think we have the, the real one open in a browser. So here it is, and it's tap eight. So the inside is not interactive. The card itself is interactive. But watch. I click on that. You see that? It didn't open up the new uh, the new Zim thing. It's because it's just using this whole thing as a card. It's it's interactive, and we can't click inside. Oh, sorry. It's using the whole thing. It's actually set to interactive false, where we can't interact with anything in the card. My apologies. <laughs> Not that it has to get confusing or anything. So um, that's set to false. But if we say true, then it will assume that we're going to interact with the inside of the card. And the question actually is, well, how do we then flip the card? Well, if you're using a page, Zim will automatically turn the background into what gets clicked on. So we're good to go there. On the front of it, how does it know to uh, click the front? Mm. I think those two things, maybe they automatically uh, already go, and yeah, that's it. Um, right, that's what it does. Okay, so if there's um, no background, then it, it keeps the whole thing clicking. If there is an object with the background or a backing, such as the page, a Zim page has a backing, then it will transfer the, the click through to, or the mouse down or whatever it's using, I think it is a mouse down probably. It'll transfer the mouse down through to the background. And that allows you to put interactive things above that, such as the the icon that clicks to the Zim site. So just have a read through the docs on that stuff. That's that's how it works. As we'll see in the next example, there's there's some more that we're going to take a look at um, for that, for how to actually turn the cards themselves so that we can't click on the cards. Or we can create our own custom clicks for the cards. I think we're going there now. Are pretty close. Did we, uh, that's that's about it. So there it is. Just a new flipper. Pass in the front. Pass in the back. And then we've got some parameters to deal with. Extra parameters to deal with. And center it. Not bad, huh? Now it's kind of funny how this flipper came about. And that is somebody had made a flipper class in Flutter, and we took a look at it and went, "What? Are you are you kidding me?" all of that code just to flip a card and it was it was ridiculous so we made it in like a quarter of the code so the, the zim flipper we made the flipper just to say hey here's here's a flipper and look we can do it in a quarter of the code that you guys took and uh then you know since we had made the flipper we <laughs> decided to give it to you guys as a zim class so uh, there's the little background story <laughs> and now why don't we go take a look at the quiz example so here's the quiz example and we're bringing in the new version of zim the quiz example has a javascript file for each page basically that uh, you can then borrow or use or whatever you want to call it you can use use that code and make your own matching game and you can just grab the code from the matching and you don't need the other stuff. Now there is there is some code in there as you'll see and we went through, I think we went through an explore, a Zim explore on how to separate out for that one. I, I can't remember if we looked at the scrambler. We looked at how to separate out one of these as an example because there is some code that connects it across the various pages and, and the way that it starts and, and handles uh, yeah, the starting animation and stuff like that is um, sometimes down here in the main page. So this is the main page right here. And there's, uh, that's us, we almost, I think, yeah, remember how we talked about the pages? Now, I think because these always go to the next page, oh, it does wrap though, so that might be a little bit different. We decided to wrap this one. We could make it so it doesn't wrap, I suppose. But uh, this is what I was talking about. Here's the swipes for each of these. And you see how scramble swipes backwards to go to intro, swipes forward to go to listen. 
<laughs> well, if, if that's the case, if this if this were just a null there, where there is no swipe backwards, and this one right at the end doesn't go back to the intro, we would put a null there. If that was how we wanted it, we no longer need to include any of these swipes. And I think, oh yeah, as soon as as soon as you specify one though, then you got to specify them all. Uh, that's interesting. So. I wonder if there's something we could do, maybe even just like an extra parameter that just says wrap. And if you turn wrap false, it will it will be how, how the default is. So in other words, we wouldn't need any of these. Uh, oh, uh, but we would. If we turn wrap true, because we do want it to wrap, if we turn wrap true, then we wouldn't need any of these because it would assume that we also want to wrap to the last one. Yeah, that would be good. Maybe you can look at, look for that either in a patch probably be pretty easy to patch. We just have to add a parameter way at the end of the pages that says wrap true or something like that. All right, anyway, we are uh, wanting to wrap. So at the moment, we would need all of this stuff in there. And this isn't really what we're looking at. We want to get in to look at the one that is match, I think, because it's the matching game. Oh, so it's coming down here, though, to show that there are some things that we're doing with restarting or resetting the various pages in this first page. So that, that handles eight quizzes or something like the eight different types of quizzes, and we're, we're doing certain things um, to them as we change from page to page, but not much. You can, you can see that there's not much in there. So we did do a, a, um, an Explore video I believe, on how to set up one of those e-learning apps. So look for it in the Zim Explorer on the YouTube channels. All right, so if we pop on into the Match.js, that's here, the Match.js, and we're styling some stuff. We've got, this is a little bit trickier than just making a card because it's a whole grid of cards, and we need to kind of keep track of the you know that that matching game like which cards match but these are the images that we're going to be putting or mixing up on those cards that's our shuffling of it we had to make a few of them we're concatenating picks and picks and picks why is that oh it just works out that that's the number of them that we need for the various pairs for how many we had and have in our grid and here we've made a function called make cards, or I don't know if they call that a factory, but anyway, we're just uh, have a function that's going to make the object or return a new card for us. And then we're tiling those. So there we are calling make card for the object. This is the zim v, so a, a zim pick object, or uh, sorry, a value. This usually would be, hey, new circle, tile a new circle, and it would make a bunch of new circles. Or we could pass in an array there and say, tile this anything from the array, and it would randomly pick from the array. Or we could tile a series, and then it would tile from the, ser the series. Or we can tile the results of a function. And then each time it goes to make something in the tile, it gets the result of this function, which happens to be a card. So we've just tiled each of these cards in there. That's called zimv. And there's various mouse downs, which are checking to see if these things. So this is the mouse down on the card. So uh, no longer are we paying attention to the actual flipping of the cards because we've pressed on the card. Instead, we're calling the mouse down here, and we call card.flip. So we're using the flip method of the card. We're also stopping the card from, um, from having its action or any action on it. Uh, with a no mouse at that time. Anyway, so we're, we're doing this uh, a toggle thing of it, uh, of the card, and that's the code right there, all of the logic to handle the yes and no's and answers, okay, which we're not really looking at in this uh, bubbling. What we do want to look at is how we made the card. So that's right in here, there's the new flipper. But basically, in the function make card, hey, we did the same thing as before, where we made an icon, scaled it, to a certain uh, size. We made a back, or a backing. We figured out what answer picture we wanted. So this is going and grabbing from this array that's been uh, shuffled and, and concatenated a bunch of times. So we're picking one of those. And since it's shuffled, we're just going through the index. So each time we're getting the next, the next card. 
the asset will be whatever one that is, such as squid or seahorse or whatever. That, that's what that is. We're cloning it because we're going to make a copy of it. We are mm, scaling it and centering it on the back of the thing and applying a blend mode because all those pictures are actually black on white and we don't want the black part. We want to get rid of that. So we're applying a blend mode, which is a nice easy way. What They weren't made as background PNGs, as you can see. Um, so if we want them to show up as just sort of dark in our app, then the blend mode of multiply will do that for us. And then here's the card where we're specifying the front and the back. We're doing a bunch of nulls until we get to this one, which means, do you want to click on the front? Do you want to click on the back? And we've said both of those is false. We don't want any clicking on the cards in an automatic way. We're going to handle that down below. And we have an answer. The answer will be, I suppose, the same picture or something like that. And uh, so we're storing that right on the card, and that helps us down below. Whenever we click on a card, we click on another card, we find out, hey, does this match the answer to the first one? And that's how we find out if those cards are the same. And you can look through that at your leisure. Pretty neat, huh? And as a matter of fact, that, that might um, just about wrap it up. Now, one thing maybe we'll... Uh, I don't know, tell you about, we'll admit to, is on our flip, do you see how that flips? We, on the canvas, we don't have a way to do perspective. So we're missing, the canvas is, uh, has, a, has a matrix, and it's missing one row and one column to be able to do perspective, uh, full 3D stuff. I suppose they did that so that it can... Uh, Hopefully it's just in the first run of the canvas. Maybe one day they'll bring that matrix to the canvas. That's what we're hoping. We'll lobby for that, probably. On the other hand, it also may uh, help increase the speed and or what we're doing on the canvas. So we could possibly bring in 3JS, which is uses, uses WebGL. And WebGL, you do have the, the extra matrix there. And that allows you to do perspective. So in other words, all we have is skew. So as we are scaling this, we're, we're squeezing the scale so it gets thinner. And we're skewing at the, at the same time. And uh, that gets that effect. So it's sort of like a, a bit of an orthographic effect, maybe. But uh, that's not too bad. I think it, you know, certainly when we were playing the game, I don't think anybody really notices. Okay. So there it is. This has been a What's Bubbling a Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. If you're digging this or, you know, if you have questions or anything like that, I, I get the feeling I went over that one kind of quickly. Um, but hopefully not quickly with respect to the flipper, quickly with respect to some other things there. But there's lots of Zim videos you can take a look at. And you can also join us on Slack, zimjs.com slash Slack, and ask us any questions. Um, you're also welcome to watch the video again if you um, need it to sort of slow things down a little bit. Uh, if maybe you think you're watching this at fastball, like that, or so you can, and YouTube, you can choose to watch it faster or slower. So that's another route to go. Have a great day or night. Ciao, ciao.